just as I remembered it. The same restless, unsatisfied sea that I knew as a boy. It all comes back. The sound of it. The anger and the gentleness of it. Yes, even the smell of it. I left it nearly 20 years ago, but I know now that it never left me. As time went by, I kept remembering little jigsaw pieces of the town where I was born. A mast against the sky, a fisherman's shed, a dory on slack tide, Names of fishing boats. A mackerel saner in the harbor, sliding across my memory. I'm home again. Home in Gloucester, Massachusetts, at the end of Cape Ann. I parked my car on the top of the hill and had a good, long look. This is where I belong. I was surprised my first day home to see how little the town has changed. I drifted on the tide of Main Street, taking in the old familiar sights and the people I used to know. It's still a ship-shaped town, still married to the sea after three centuries and still dedicated to the man in fishing clothes, to the sailors who bring the harvest from the sea. It was good to see the old skipper again, braced on his granite deck, forever staring across the harbor for some trace of the 10,000 Gloucestermen who have perished at sea. In my town, tears and salt water have always mixed. For the first time, it's as though I'm seeing my town through the eyes of a tourist. I'm shopping for scenes of my childhood. It took the antique shops to remind me that Gloucester was born in 1610. I think that makes us an early American community, although we don't make too much fuss about tradition. Maybe we're a little proud of our age, but we're prouder still of our looks. Little things like weather-beaten sheds, lobster pots and markers drying in the sun. Color splashes everywhere. The artists know our beauty. They come here summer after summer and for them, September comes too soon. Oh, it's pretty all right. But no town gets by on good looks alone. This one certainly doesn't. There's too much work to be done. And that means fishing. In one year's time, Gloucester hauls 200 million pounds of fish from the sea. Strangers used to ask me, what does it take to put that much fish on the table? And then I'd tell them. Tell them about patient hands that solve a million knots. Tough hands that tackle tough jobs, like racking miles of fishnet to dry in the sun. I'd tell them about the quick, sure hands that flick meaty fillets from the packing room conveyor belt and tuck them into a million boxes with never a fumble. Then I'd sing out the story of hands that build Gloucester's wooden boats in a shipyard that's been operating here since 1684. Honest oak from the forests of Maine, 
the skill of proud carpenters who learn their trade from their fathers and who teach it to their sons. Four months of steady work and a Gloucester fishing boat is born, strong and ready for the sea's big fist. Yet there's another kind of strength here. Every year, the Archbishop comes down from Boston to bless our fleet. Gloucester men know it takes more than sturdy ships and good navigation to keep coming back from the fishing banks, from the graveyard of the Atlantic. The people listen and pray for the men who sail the fleet. men from the cradle onward. A Gloucester child grows up beside the sea. The song of the surf is his first lullaby. When he swings high on a swing, the sea is under his shoes. The ball he hits for his first home run may bounce into the outgoing tide. His shadow is cast on the water, a prophecy of life ahead. Some people say you can tell a Gloucesterman by the cut of his jib. I think there is a Gloucester book. The milkman and the mayor have it in common with captains and captains' wives. In the Gloucester scheme of things, good ships and good men get together. The test of both comes every day in this town. I think of that test every time the Santa Maria heads out for mackerel. She looks mighty trim, every seaworthy foot of her. She has tons of crushed ice in her gizzard, and her seine boat trails behind her like a sea dog on a leash. Most of the crew were kids with me. Now they're a standout team that takes more mackerel than any other crew in the fleet. Maria has two captains. One is Peter Guarassi, who can see more mackerel with his eyes half closed than most men could see with a telescope. The other is Peter Mercurio, a steel-muscled, all-around saltwater boss. Good crew, good cook. That's Vito Girardi, one of the best. A man at sea eats enough for three. So Vito's reputation is on the block three times a day, and he knows the boys won't stand for too much mackerel. Mackerel, gypsies of the sea, are where you find them, 400 yards or 400 miles from home. Garossi shouts from the crow's nest. He sees a patch of boiling water. There they are, slashing, dancing mackerel, swarming near the surface.
the crew gets the seine boat ready for action. Every seam of the Santa Maria buckles down to business. Every pulse quickens, for the age-old excitement of the chase is still here. The diesel engines roar full speed ahead, and the Santa Maria cuts deep in the water as she tows the seine boat in a huge circle around the school of fish. Teamwork is vital now. Out of the seine boat shoots the big mackerel seine. 1,500 feet long, 177 feet deep. Get it out and get those ends together. Like a giant spider, the Santa Maria spins her web on the water. sweeps in on this man-made circle, trying to pull it apart. But the ring holds, and now the men move like machines as they see their chances growing. Four acres of salt water and thousands of mackerel are in that net. Now they start closing the trap. The winch snorts and whines as the underside of the seine is pulled together like an old-fashioned drawstring purse. Every turn of the winch is important now, for the mackerel can dive for the ocean floor before the purse strings close the trap. The boys have set their seine thousands of times, but there's a new challenge with every spread of the net. And now they put their muscle to it. Hands and arms and sturdy backs strain together as the long pull begins. How many pounds of fish in the net? A boatload or just enough to wet the deck? Back on the mothership, the home guard fences off the deck for the avalanche that's going to come aboard. This is a crew at the peak of performance. Every man with a job to do and every man doing his job. That's the way it's been in Gloucester for 300 years. That's the way it has to be. These men must work as a team. Their lives depend on it sometimes. Their livelihood, always. Heavy with mackerel, the sagging net is close hauled to the Santa Maria. There's a pocket of silver there in the sea, but it feels like lead. Down goes the dip net. With every scoop, 1,000 pounds of mackerel comes out of the sea. Up and down, hour after hour, the dip net ladles a good day's wages from the bulging trap. to feed 2,000 families shimmers on the deck like a heavy rain. Scales fly through the air like sparks from a forge. Every time a lid comes off the deck, 40 to $100 worth of fresh mackerel goes down the hatch to a bed of chopped ice below. At the end of a long day's fishing, the Santa Maria will hold no more. She turns homeward in the fading light. Tension is gone now. The crew relaxes on deck. Cheerful men, going home, unaware that back home, back in Gloucester in the dying afternoon, there's something restless in the heavens. A storm is gathering and heading out to sea. In 
days of sail, storms took a heavy toll of ships and men. Today, we have a better lease on life, but we're still uneasy when the wind is from the northeast. At Eastern Point, the lighthouse keeper climbs the tower and checks his light, keeping it alive in the darkness. A woman prays for her husband's safe return. A mother watches from her window and waits. Just a few steps off Main Street, the old timers go right on with their game. Storms make them a little restless and stir memories of their bouts with the sea. But they have confidence in the men who took their places. always end. Gloucester always gives thanks for that. Once a year, Gloucester's fishermen pay their respects to the patron saint of all fishermen, Democratic St. Peter. Through the narrow, twisting streets, fishermen carry a 600-pound statue of their beloved saint. The men of the Santa Maria are always in the line. Peter Mercurio, Peter Garassi, Tony Alloy, Vito, Peter Ferrante, Joe Sinagra, Tony Savasli. This is their unfailing day off, and a day off for mackerel, too. The parade winds on for two long miles. Some women march all the way in their stocking feet. They promised in their prayers to do this in return for the safekeeping of their loved ones at sea. St. Peter's Fiesta is carnival time, and visitors come from everywhere to celebrate with Gloucester. My ears were ringing but I felt that I was officially home again. I went down to the shore to watch the same boat race. A busman's holiday for mackerel fishermen, rowing boats on their day off. I wanted to be a boy again when I saw the grease pole contest. When I was a kid, we called it the slide for life. Whoops, the idea hadn't changed. Grab the flag at the end of the pole. There's always one lad who turns the trick. thinking most about our people and our way of life, our town, what it is. Peter Mercuriously stands for all of us. Some of us descended from original Yankee settlers. Others came here from Italy, Sicily, Portugal, the Azores, Nova Scotia, Finland, wherever men follow the sea. 
but we're Americans. We put tons of fish in the market baskets of America, and we live in harmony here in Gloucester. Everywhere I've gone since I left this town, it's been the same. We can live together, if they try. And Gloucester tries. Good Americans. Americans at home. <laughs>